What's up guys, it's Damp. I have Izzy back to make another ARC video for you all on the science of breeding in ARC and how to do it is it's fairly complex, so she's going to walk you through all the steps. Go ahead, Iz. What's up? Hiya, thank you very much. Um, yeah, so the first thing I want to say is this has taken me a while to get to this stage. There was a lot of trial and error. Uh, we had a baby that died on me, which was very sad, and a baby that I didn't even get to see because I was asleep. So. The first thing I want to say is don't attempt this unless you're A, ready to have some to die, and B, just you have a lot of time on your hands, um, because they take a lot a lot of time, uh, especially on an unmodded server. Like, ours has been changed, so it's a little bit faster, um, just because no one's got time, but on a s normal server, it will take you hours, probably the best part of an entire day, to get this done. Um, so yeah, so the first step, obviously, is to get a male and a female of the same species. Um, I'm going to be showcasing uh, Cupid and Ghost over here. Um, so, beforehand, obviously, you can still see they've got the hearts of the mate boosted. Now, the best thing to do is to get the highest level tames that you can, and it's the base tame. So, Ghost is the highest level he could have been because he was tamed at 120, which is your best bet because after they've actually you've manually leveled them up, it doesn't count anymore. So Cupid is not the best person to be using for a tame, but I'm using it for, um, obviously, showing purposes. Um, okay, so you'll need a pen, like the one that we're in, um, because you have to set them to wander to actually mate. Um, if you hover over them, it says enable wandering to mate. Um, and yes, the pen is, is great to make sure that they don't wander out of proximity of each other. Um, and its secondary purpose is really good for just protection for both the mother while she's pregnant and the babies once they're born. So I'm going to go ahead and tell these guys to wander just so you can see how it's going to go. So I've enabled Ghost to wander and if I can get over here to Cupid I'll enable her to wander. And now you should see the throbbing red hearts on top of them. So they're, uh, that means that they're actually mating currently. So you'll see a mating timer on Cupid, which tells you who she's mating with, the level, and how far through she's mated with. Now, if they happen to wander out of proximity of each other, that progress is lost, hence why the pen is very useful. Um, if you've got more in an area as well, you're more likely to get um, them to, to breed, basically. Um, so, yeah. So whilst they are doing this and making sure once they're pregnant it's really good idea to have a feeding trough on hand because you will need to keep the mother once she's pregnant very well fed and she eats twice or three times as much as she normally does just standing around so it is a very uh, very intensive um, job to keep them well fed um, however the father doesn't really care so you can take him away once they've finished mating and, and leave the mother to it that's what not a, a problem at all. That is. <laughs> yeah typical man <laughs> um, so yeah so these guys should be almost finished um, it takes a while which is again why you need the pen um, so to make sure that you don't lose the progress that you've gained um, however if you've got multiples in a pen they can wander from mating from one individual to mating with another and as long as there was no gap in between, you don't lose your progress, but you might end up with a completely different mating um, group than you thought you were going to get. Um, to go into the chance of babies, um, most of the time you're going to get one single baby from a mother. They do think that they're going to change it per species, but at the moment it's just one each. Um, and there is a 10% chance of twins throughout species and a 2% chance of triplets. Um, so these three all came from different mothers and also twins and triplets are genetically identical. So you're not going to get slightly different ones. They are just going to be exactly the same. Um, so these three, these three that I made earlier um, have all advanced to the juvenile stage. So the first stage that you go through is the baby stage. And that is the most labor intensive stage of them all. Um, you have to hand feed them berries, so you, they can't feed from a feeding trough. Um, and they can only hold, at the beginning, five or six berries. And they eat them at a rate of knots. They eat them very, very quickly. And if they run out, they will just die. So it's really, really, really important that you stay near them. You have a stock of berries on hand. 
and that you keep making sure that they're full up. Um, now, if we look at this um, this deer's uh, stats, I can tell you about um, when they advance to the juvenile stage. So, as you can see, it's got the berries in here, and once their weight limit gets to 10% of their final weight limit, so in this instance it's 290, once the weight reaches 29, or the maximum weight, if you'll have a look, I should be able to fill this up to just a maximum weight. Um, if I can find enough things to put in it. Um, so yeah, it's got a maximum weight where I can't put anything else in it anymore. And so when it reached 29, that was when it advanced to the juvenile stage. Um, and once it reaches the juvenile stage, as this one has, it becomes a lot, lot easier to deal with because they can feed themselves Um, so yeah, so you can get them to the juvenile stage and then they can feed themselves from a feeding trough and they can just stand around and they're a lot, lot easier. Um, the next stage after these guys, uh, which I'm not sure any of them are particularly near it yet, um, is once they get to 50% of their weight or 50% of their um, maturation, uh, which is the progress bar at the bottom, um, they become adolescents. Uh, so they get a lot bigger and they, again, are just more useful. They can, they can actually do things. They can kind of hold their own. Um, I would still keep them in a pen, though, just to make sure that they don't die on you. Um, and then the next stage after that is, of course, just becoming a full, fully-fledged adult. Um, so the only other thing I want to talk about is the genetics behind it. Now, this, again, um, some of it has been from research online, and some of it has been from my own um, trial and error. Um, it does appear that... <clears throat> the, they have a 70% chance of gaining the higher parent stat. So, for example, one of them has a really high health and the other one has a low health. There is a 70% chance of the baby gaining the higher of the two. And it's 70% for each stat. So it's not 70% overall. Um, so you can get some better and some worse. Um, so that's pretty interesting as far as I'm concerned and it has led me to kind of create like pedigree diagrams so one of the things that I've been doing once I've tamed new tames is I've been writing down their stats so before I've leveled them up at all I've been writing down their base stats and then I've been using that to work out which ones I want to breed with each other to make sure I get the best kind of options um, once you get down to like the second generation, so the ones that you've bred these babies once they breed again, it becomes more interesting again because they'll have higher stats, they'll have a higher chance, they'll be better than any that you can get in the wild, and you're also able to get them to higher levels. Um, I had a friend of mine get a level 199 uh, when it was born, which of course the highest you can get in-game is 120, so it was a, a lot, lot better. Um, and I'm pretty sure that's almost everything. Um, the only other thing that I found interesting was it seems like they've got a chance of retaining or having their parents' colorings. So I don't think they get random other colorings. I think they have one or other or a mix of their parents' color. So for example, this one, Snowy, was the daughter of uh, Rudolph over there, who is also completely white. Um, so there does seem to be some genetic component to their coloration. And I think that's pretty much it. Awesome. So thank you for all your research. And I'll that's all right. Away. I've only been researching deer, but okay. <laughs> it's been really interesting. We'll have another video, guys, on reptiles as we begin to get some more experience with that. But currently, this was really in-depth that at least would give you an intro to breeding and something that I'm sure there's been a ton of questions on as it's so complex. So um, I'll throw Izzy's info in the... Um, in the description below so you can uh, tweet her and ask her some questions if you've got something so thanks for watching very very much and thank you very much Izzy for all your help you're welcome see ya bye guys